than anything else. And some of my white brethren out there, y'all are tripping big time. Talking about we lose in America. I'm sorry, but this was Mexico before it was America. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and Viva La France, they said, we're going to take it back. And I know how you feel when they come on your property and everything, but you know what? You're still Christian. All right, I'm going to pose a situation to the audience here in Ann Sam. You're a rancher. you got a big ranch. Barbed wire friends protecting your ranch. And right next to you where you live in America is Mexico. They cut your barbed wire and they're coming through there. They're coming through in groups of 50s. Now they got a, you know, poo-poo and everything else. And they ain't got no toilets. And they're out there and all of a sudden you come out to the front door of the ranch and you take a deep breath. What? <laughs> what the and all of a sudden you get your rifle and you get on a horse and you riding around. Man, what is this on my property? And then you run up on a whole bunch of people camping out, campfires, and, and, and babies crying, no pampers, and, and, and human waste everywhere, garbage everywhere, flies, and rats, and rodents, and... No, what you mean, come on? Bob, am I painting a true picture of what's happening? Yeah. That is a true picture. You see, we live in the city, you see, you don't see it like that. And then, and then, they start shooting at you on your horse. Rrr, wait a minute. Yes. Now, that is the true picture of what our country is facing today. And there's a lot of anxiety and all of that. But to the Christians, I'm going to say this. I get on my horse, and I'm out there riding, and I've got my gun, and when I hear it, that means that bullet just went right by you. And you say, whoa, praise the Lord. Hold on, Jesus. Hold on. Y'all don't shoot. Don't shoot. I got food with me. I got food with me. And then I get off and I be waving the flag. Food with me. I'm John. This is my land. Wait. Anybody speak English? Yes. All right. Here's some pampers. Look, can y'all keep it clean? But look, I'm going to chain this back up and it's going to be electricity on it next week. So come through this way no more. Run. Run. I'm talking about the Christian way. Oh, yeah, right. Because, Bob, you can't stop the flow. You can't stop it. Only the government can. And the government ain't going to do that. They don't want to stop it. Some of them are doing that. Some of the ranchers are putting water out there, but when you shoot, when they shoot, and like a couple of weeks ago, they kill. You yeah. shot a rancher and kill him. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's a. I I know, but if you're a Christian, they, you know, hey, they are helping. If any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but take that bullet in the name of the Lord. Yeah, no, are. and I know that's hard. People, I know it's hard because we don't. Th you better take this stuff off the page. Mm. Yeah, I know Val. They're killing him. Right, I like Abraham did. What? What you mean? Well, he came with some people with him. He was shot. Came with some people with him, huh? Be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. At least we're thinking as Christians. But you're not a vigilante group with white no, no. sacks on your head. No, you bring, you bring going up there and you're going to shoot up the old cake They're around. Not doing like that. That. They're not doing that. Why are you coming out there by yourself either? Okay. So we're going through some tension in our country, in America, and you need to pray for my brothers down there because I know how it is. But let's get back to this. People, people are not happy in this nation or in this community. Uh, every fabric, fabric of our society has been affected by this, and the church is just trying to be politically correct. And I'm trying to say to the church, we got to be Christian here. We can't go out there murdering people, <laughs> even if they are on you. You can't do that. Now, it's different if they come in your house, and they're going to try to invade your house, then, you know... <laughs> Talk to Dr. Clink after the service, and Dr. Clink will tell you who he's voting for as a sheriff and why he's voting for him. And then I think you will know what I'm talking about. But let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. Verse 3 in Psalm 128 says, Your wife 
shall be, since this is Mother's Day, your wife shall be like a fruitful vine within your house, and your children like olive plants around the table. Boy, dinner time has always been a great time in this house. But we do not have the same view of the wife or the woman in our society that the Lord had in mind. Because the woman in this society, the view that we have of her, and correct me, pal, if I'm wrong, that we have of her is that be careful what you say to her because if you say the wrong thing to her, her is going to get back at you in such a way that you wish you had not have said it to her. No, we see a different kind of thing for her in this verse, ladies. It says, your wife shall be like a fruitful vine. This is the picture of a grapevine flourishing with the sweetest of grapes. That you just want to taste the sweetness of the fruit and say, mmm, girl. <laughs> I just wanted to feel that for a moment in the room. I mean, <laughs> it's a wonderful thing as we continue to look at this. We have replaced the fruitful joy of childbearing as a curse. See, that means that, that if she got some babies in the house, that's a wonderful thing. Guys, if she's had your children, now even if she's there with you without your children, she should be a fruitful vine. Now guys, you don't believe me. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. i got to give you that admonition because see, you guys think this is just a one-way street. 1 Peter 3 and 7. 1 Peter 3 and 7. You guys should know this verse by heart. By heart. You should know it by heart. You should know it. I mean, Greg, you should have been able to quote this. As a matter of fact, I want you to read it aloud because I want you to make sure that this verse goes deep down in your brain. Read it aloud so the cameraman, cameraman, film him as he reads it. Now go ahead, read it. Your husband, the same way, live with your wife in an understanding way as someone working with your husband in an understanding way as with someone weaker since she is a woman and show honor as a fellow heir of the grace of life so that your prayers will not be hindered. All right, would another man like to answer what that verse is saying? See, now silence falls on the room. See, silence falls on the room. You see, Trent, you didn't want... All right, well, answer, Trent. What does it mean? Know your wife and uh, live accordingly. Just, just know how she... Know her... What she likes, what she doesn't like, her... her the, the good and the bad, and, and, and adjust your, your living to accommodate... To keep the peace in the home. And if you don't, what did Peter say going to happen to you? Oh, Peter? I don't know what Peter said... Um, oh, you well, the guy's gonna hold you responsible, and you won't be blessed. Yes, but I'm thinking about more with the Robert blessings said. of uh, Psalm 128 and one will be retracted from you. Right. That's what that means. Our theme scripture, Psalm 128 and one. I told you not to leave it on the page. Put it in your heart. Now you're not gonna do what God just told you to do. Then don't go to Him praying about nothing. Mm -hmm. He's gonna devastate your life mm -hmm. if you treat that woman poorly in one way. You better not roll your eyes at her. You better not call her out of her name. Amen. And sure enough, don't be talking about nobody else about Amen. your woman because Amen. she's a fruitful vine. Amen. Even if she ain't understanding your ignorant vine. I like Ephesians chapter 5. No. <laughs> you see what he's trying to do?